All right, let's look at the octahedral electron domain. So if we had six electron domains, the electron domain geometry is octahedral. So that means we have six bonding electron domains and zero non-bonding electron domains. If that happens, the electron domain geometry is the same as the molecular. We call that guy octahedral. And an example is something like FS6. So you have sulfur, you have six fluorines. We can write all this out and then they have enough electrons. And you should work this out each time. So I'm just showing you the final answer. Uh, you should be able to draw all these electron, uh, all these Lewis structures. You can also have five bonding domains, one non-bonding domain. In this case, this thing is completely symmetric, so it doesn't really matter which one of these, um, you know, bonding domains you kind of remove and, and turn it into a non-bonding domain. You get the same answer because it's completely symmetric. Um, so this ends up being something called the square pyramid. So if I were to draw this out, or if you want to think about it, right, this is what an octahedral looks like. You have um, like a square, and you got something on the top and something on the bottom. That's the worst square I've ever drawn. <laughs> I was trying to draw a diamond. All right, so we have a square, something on the top, something on the bottom. Um, and now what we're doing is, suppose we take off this guy on the bottom. Now I have a square pyramid, right? If you wanted to think about this guy as looking kind of like a pyramid, if I did, just draw on some sides there, you know, a, four, um, a pyramid with a, with a four-sided base square pyramid. Square pyramidal, if you want to add that bail at the end. Different books call it different things. BRF5, that was a B, BRF5. So you have your bromine, you have Fs, and then down there you had lone pairs, and six dots around each fluorine. So because of that lone pair here, that's what makes it a square pyramid. And then you have four and two. Now this time when you take it off, you want those lone pair electrons on the central atom to be as far away from each other as possible. So you're going to get rid of you know, that top electron, um, that top bond. And now you're going to make, basically it just looks like a square planar. It's planar. It's all in one plane. And it's square, so it's square planar. So this is something like XEF4. So this time, once you start removing the electrons, it does matter where you take, uh, not remove, you're not even removing them. I don't know if that's the best explanation of what you're doing, but you're turning the bonding into non bonding. And then you have one on the top and one on the bottom. So that's a square planar situation. All right, so again, going back to. This little picture, right? If we start, this is what octahedral looks like, right? Where you have you know one, two, three, four. Um, think about it like that, that square. Those aren't really bonds. There, here's just the shape. Um, the bonds are. Let's try that again. You had your central atom, one on top, one on bottom, and then you have four things here. And they kind of make a square if you were to draw in on, on the sides. Uh, the first thing you want to do is get rid of that bottom one. Where you still have lone pair electrons, right, and you still have this kind of like square shape in there. Those are not bonds, so th that's just the square shape. Um, and then if you were to draw in these other sides, this thing kind of looks like a square uh, pyramid. And then if you were to get rid of another pair, you just have your square planar um, at the end. All right, let's do a couple examples. Of what we're trying to do here. So draw the use Vesper. So you're going to draw the Lewis structure, and then you're going to figure out how many electron domains you have, and then what's the molecular domain geometry. So SF6 again. We're going to draw the Lewis structure. So remember how to do that. Uh, sulfur has six electrons. You're based on where it is in the periodic table, and then fluorine has seven, and I have four fluorines. So seven times four is 28, plus another six is 34. So I'm going to put sulfur in the middle. I have my fluorines going on the outside. And I subtract 2, 4, 6, 8, which gives me what, 30, or 26. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So I have an extra pair, so I throw them on there. And I can see I have one, two, three, four bonding, one non-bonding. So I have five electron domains. 
That means the electron domain geometry is a trigonal bipyramid. All right, and then since I have four bonding and one non-bonding, that would make it a seesaw. So the molecular geometry is a seesaw. And then you can do the same thing for IF5. So I um, and F are both halogens. So I has seven valence electrons. Fluorine has seven. I have five of those, so that's 35. And seven gives me 42 electrons. I'm going to put I in the middle. And I'm going to put five fluorines on the outside. And so I just did two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I have 32 left over. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. I have two left over there. So I have a total of you know one, two, three, four, five, six electron domains. This guy has six electron domains. That means his electron domain geometry is octahedral, and his molecular domain is a square pyramid. Square pyramid. Um, ICL4, do the same process, and if you want to pause the video right now and see if you can draw the Lewis structures all by yourself, that's cool. So I have 28 and 7 gives me 35, and then don't forget to add that charge, 36. If you ever do this and you end up with a an odd number of electrons, it's because you probably forgot to do the charge. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to give you any of the um, exceptions to the rule here. CL and CL, so minus 2, 4, 6, 8 gives us what? So 28. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And I have four left over, two in the top, two in the bottom. So I have a total of six electron domains. And the electron domain geometry is octahedral. And the molecular domain geometry is square planar. So now that we've looked at all the different electron domains, we can see what happens when you know when you have a bigger molecule, something more than just having one central atom. So if we look at this guy here, he's got a whole bunch of atoms in it, right? It's a bigger molecule. And what if we wanted to figure out what the geometry was around each one of these atoms? So we can look at this guy first, right? Look, look at that one. That's a carbon. And so you can see it has one. Right, it has. I'll do it in red. It's got one two, three, four bonds. So that's a carbon, and that carbon has four bonds, has four electron domains. So I would say that that, and they're all bonding, so that guy would be tetrahedral. So that carbon right there would be uh, tetrahedral, which would mean the bond angles are 109.5. Um, and if I didn't mention it before, octahedral, everybody has 90 degree bond angles. All right, from the one above there. And now let's look at this next guy. So now let's focus on this atom. I have one, to three electron domains, right? That's three electron domains. That means it's trigonal planar, and the bond angles are 120. So I can figure out not only the shape, but also the bond angles around each atom. And then this last one, if I were to draw it, has it has lone pairs, right? And so I'd have to show you that. This is just a pic, uh, you know, just a just a representation of that. Um, you need to look at the entire molecular. Uh, shape, so you need to look at the, the lone pair electrons and the um, electron domain as well. So this one I have one, two, three, four electron domains. It is tetrahedral and the bond angles are 109.5. So with that information I can figure out what the bond angles are for the entire atom. So here to here to here that's 109.5. Here to here to here that's 109.5. Um, but from here to here to here, that's 120. And then from, I think, from here, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoops, let's go back to red. From here to here to here, that's 109.5. So in the next picture, um, 
What you don't want to do is just, this is not drawn to scale. This is not drawn with um, the, the right angles. You have to figure that out based on the Lewis structure. So you have to figure out what type of carbon I have, um, what, and then what, you know, is it tetrahedral, is it linear, whatever I have, and then is, uh, what are the bond angles? So this one they're asking for, what's the HCH bond angle? If you just looked at that, you would probably say, oh, it's 90. Look at that, I know all my geometry. It's a 90 degree angle. This is not drawn to scale. So what I have to do is look at this carbon and say, this has one, two, three, four electron domains. That means it's tetrahedral, which means it's 109.5 degrees. So that HCH or this HCH or this HCH or whatever, even this HCC um, is 109.5 uh, 109 degrees. Now we want to know what is the CCC? What is that bond? And if you were to look at that, you would say, oh, that's definitely linear. Those 180 degrees. Let's check that. So let's focus on the central atom. So like just like we did for that carbon, we looked at that carbon, the central atom and that bond. Right, the HCH bond, that's the central atom. So here, this is the central atom, this one. So I look at that carbon, I have one, two electron domains. So that is linear, and the bond angles are 180 degrees. So make sure you do a couple homework problems that are just like that. So you're, you're gonna just take it step by step and try to figure out what the bond angles are.